Where are you going? I gotta get my run in by seven if I'm gonna make yoga at eight. You hate exercise. It's distracting. And distraction is the universal human motivator. And I'm curious um, if you feel like the show found its groove in a, in a way in season two? Um, is it just sort of like the path of a show finding itself? I like season two also. I think um, the more you do them, the more you figure out exactly where you best fit. I think with our show that has elements of comedy and drama, you have to, you know, you're walking this line. There are some episodes that are gonna be more comedic, some that are more dramatic. I think after a season's worth, you hopefully love these characters a little more and you can do more drama, you can do more interesting storytelling. How do you I identify with them? Like if, uh, we'll start with you. Well, Karen. considering they're so flawed, very much so. <laughs> um, no, but I, I, they are extremely flawed, you're right, and uh, very dysfunctional and codependent and um, unmoored and sort of have a hole that can't be filled. <laughs> um, and they try with lots of things people. But, um, and uh, I think it's relatable. I mean, I think Xander said this really amazing thing where he was like, this is a show about people who should be happy because they seemingly have everything, but they're just not. All right, I have a question. Mm -hmm. And you know, no pressure, but your answer might determine the outcome of this date. <laughs> oh, oh, well that's a, that's a crazy amount of pressure. <laughs> but, um, okay, okay, hit me. How do you feel about nachos? As far as my character is concerned, I definitely, mm -hmm. I mean, I relate to this, this girl who's sort of grown up in Los Angeles and she's got very progressive parents and she's sort of very wise beyond her years, but in that there's, there's maybe a, a mental maturity, but not an emotional maturity. You know, I think I also ready. employ cynicism and stuff like that to sort of deflect and, 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 and keep, the, um, keep the demons at bay. So it's, it, in playing him, it's a matter of sort of turning, turning up the volume on all those things. But that said, you know, these characters evolve. Like, the wonderful thing, and I think the reason you like season two is because it, they're not in this place of stasis where they just, you know, remain broken and then stay broken. They are doing everything they can to, to better themselves and to... to to really look under the covers of how they got to be the way they are. And um, and so they are changing and, and it's not overnight and people don't suddenly, you know, completely change their DNA overnight, but they are, they're trying. And I think we see them try and, and, and move the needle on the dial a little bit. And we see, you know, flashes of happiness. Is, is the show essentially over when they find true happiness? <laughs> <laughs> and in, or sustained happiness? They won't find true happiness. <laughs> There's also like a health and happiness aren't necessarily the same thing. So there's a lot to kind of bump up against. You can be really happy being really unhealthy and really miserable being healthy. So we know if we get a script that has an up ending that the next week we're really screwed <laughs> as a general rule. The good thing about this format and this structure is you can have episodes where these people are as happy as can be and it's fun and it's zany and they're on adventures and then the next episode some bad thing happens to them and they all have to rally around each other and I think that sort of parallels real life. I mean that's, that's my real life so I, I don't think it's ever just oh yeah they found happiness good to go like show over. I think wherever we end up it'll be bittersweet and there will be some things wrapped up and some things that will never be answered, I imagine. When you move out of a house and you've been with each other for two years, you have familiarity and codependence and, and basically this family is willfully separating to try to go um, find a new version of happiness. And I think you could probably guess if you've seen the show, they have um, varying degrees of success and uh, a lot of it is them flailing because they don't have each other. So yeah, it changes a lot of what we're doing and obviously it, it's it's a new way to tell the story of these three people who are so good together is by pulling them apart. But ultimately, I think the show works best when they are all together because they're wonderful actors and wonderful people and they just do this sort of magical thing when they're on screen together.